Hello, well continuing my green woodworking theme, I'm going to be shaping arms and legs today but what I'm going to be using is an interesting workbench called a spoon mule and I'll show you a close-up of what it looks like folded and then I'll unfold it and show it to you in use but it's very good as a work holding device and for taking around particularly for carving spoons actually a lot of people like to carve spoons from green wood and the spoon mule is just a job but it's also just a job for doing these legs well this is what the spoon mule looks like when it's been folded up and basically it's a bench on legs with some jaws that clamp the piece of work you want to cut shave or whatever so i have it just for traveling also strapped and i have straps on the poles as well on the legs just so that they don't fly around everywhere and it makes it a lot easier when it comes to assembly i just place the legs in the holes i know which leg goes in which hole as needless to say no leg is perfectly matched and then i can assemble quickly and I have my bench up in a matter of a few minutes. Ah, legs all on. I'm going to fix the head on the spoon mule next, but I thought it would just be helpful to show you how it works. Um, just close up first of all. So you have these two paddles underneath which are just hanging on like a wire skewer so they're free to sort of move and the idea of these is you push them out with your feet and as you do that if you look here you'll see these little drawers close in so you can hold bits of work in these jaws. It's incredibly simple but it acts like a little vice and it's really useful. So I'll pop this head on the mule and then show you it being used. And again, the installation is really very straightforward. It just clamps in and the wedge goes in and it's on. Uh, nothing so sort of difficult about that. I'll bring you in close in a minute, but basically my feet are down on the ground and I'm able to move these jaws. So put a bit of wood in and it's being held really solidly in these jaws. If the jaws are too deep, I just put a little bit of wood underneath. If I'm working on something fairly small, so I might do it like that. And again, it's still holding lovely and firm for working on. I must say the spoon mule makes a very comfortable bench to sit on. I first saw spoon mule, it was Jared Dow who um, put up one on YouTube and he actually has a lovely website, um, Wood Spirit Handcraft, where he sells lovely items of turned wood and domestic ware. Very skillful maker and his website's well worth a look. So that's Jared Dow. I'll pop down in the notes a link for his website. Uh, yeah, and I mean, I had a go at making one. I now actually have done some plans as well because I had quite a few people asking me how to make one. And I thought it's easier just to do some plans. 100% of the profit of the plans I sell, so you know, all, all the money you pay basically, goes to a cancer charity uh, for blood cancers and it goes to support people who are you know, patients uh, at a very difficult time in their life. So it's MDS Patient Support Group. And you'll find them on my website, Bucklehurst Leather, be a link at the end of the video, but you can buy the plans for a stupidly cheap price of 2 99 And um, that all goes to help a charity as well. So, you know, do take a look. Plans are very simple. Uh, it's a nice construction and a good project to get you going. Anyway, I'll show you close in some of the carving. So I'll um, round a couple of legs just to give you sort of an impression of how it can do the work holding. 
and for that I've got my little mini draw knife, quite a nice little useful thing. So here's a bit of the wood I split off the other day and look I can just pop it between the jaws on the spoon mule and it will hold it nice and solid. That's not going to budge anywhere and I'm not really putting any pressure at all with my feet. I'm just waving my feet out slightly but you've got the leverage, obviously the long wooden arms that I showed you. And then you can just plane away or shape or whatever and you've got yourself quite a nice little work area. Sometimes I, I use a knife on this and sometimes I end up having to slightly move the piece of work upward as I'm going to have to do here. But I've got this you know, nice thing, turn it around, just re relax my feet, reclamp and you've got this good bit of work holding. Again, turn it over. It takes a bit of getting used to and you'll find depending on what you're making, if you're doing spoons you'll get good at actually doing them in a way where you get maximum advantage of the spoon mule. I've popped a video up on carving an English eating spoon where I'm using this spoon mule and I quite like taking it with me when I'm going on uh, green woodworking, what we call bodging events. The reason they're called bodging events is because there used to be itinerant craftspeople called bodgers who used to make chair legs in the woods. They cut a tree down, split it out, and while the wood was all green, i.e. wet with sap in it, they would turn chair legs on a basic pole lathe particularly prevalent around the High Wycombe area in England and um, they you know, would turn out legs at a speed you just couldn't replicate on a power lathe now I don't think but the wood when it's green it cuts so easily it's just so different to seasoned wood so I'm going to at the moment just get the bulk off with the draw knife and I will refine it a bit more, probably we're using a little carving knife later on. But I just wanted to get these broadly round at this stage. I think that will do for this one. So it's just getting the limb shape. I mean, if I take what will become an arm, so if you're just wondering what on earth am I talking about an arm, I'm going to over the next two or three videos make some of the old Grodnatol dolls. These are the wooden dolls that used to be made in um, Europe around the sort of 1800s right the way through to about 1930. And they're rather nice. It's an old sort of craft type doll. Very few makers now, so quite a rarity. And they command a fair bit as antiques. In a later video, I should be able to show you a genuine doll, actually, so you can see exactly what I'm doing. But again, I'm just holding bits here. It does make a nice little work holder. If I'm doing larger items, I often just lay them flat on the table. So if you're doing a larger spoon, for example, you can lay it flat across this table and then you can just shape it and it makes a nice solid work surface. I made this one out of elm, but I mean you can use any wood at all. I've seen people making them out of um, shop-bought lumber. So, you know, they've gone along and bought some four by twos and have made one. It's great actually because people buy the plans and I've had a lot of people send me pictures of what they've done, which is very kind. It's always interesting to see the different versions that people make. Some people have also put different heads on their spoon mules. So um, leather workers <laughs> have added things like saddler's clam tops to them. Uh, one friend, he put a nice saddler's clam on it and then he put a blacksmithing anvil on one end as well, which I thought was rather clever. And in all, he had about five different heads, you know, for spoon carving, 
and other things as well. But yeah, it's quite, quite innovative. There's another little one. I hope you can just see it. it's just nice as a little way of holding work safely. And I'm just getting these at the moment rough rounded. I think they're going to be too thick as they are, but I can take them down more finely later on. I use my spoon mule as a sort of roving workbench really. And at the back of it, I've put a you know, eye bolt for a hook and I've got knives with hooks on them so I can hook them onto this and get huge leverage. If you look at my making an English eating spoon video, you'll see me using a big um, French power knife, but it's very useful uh, having a hook on the end, as long as you don't sit on it. <laughs> so there you have it, my spoon mule. Very useful bit of equipment for green woodworking and if you're, particularly if you're doing fine items. Anyway, link below if you want the plans. I'll pop a link below to the video I did on making an English eating spoon using a spoon mule. And I'll also put a link down for the Wood Spirit website that I mentioned, Jared's website, uh, as that's, he's got lovely wooden ware on there that he makes. And he did a couple of videos a long while back now um, on using a spoon mule as well. Okay then, <laughs> see you in the next video. Bye bye.